Hi, everyone. I think we're live. I'm just talking to myself on the screen. So I just want to make sure. Yay, we're live. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Makia, Makia Machine. Uh, this is a really amazing opportunity to be doing a demo for Blick. And as artists, as we all are artists, we all know that, you know, Blick is a place that we frequent. I was at Blick yesterday getting a bunch of supplies. So it's a really great opportunity. It's also a really great opportunity to be doing something with Liquitex. Um, I've been using their products uh, for a very long time, even before my residency. I'll go into that a little bit later. Um, I'm a multidisciplinary artist. What does that mean? It means that I like to explore and I like to make things and whatever comes out, of interest is what I do. I also make music. I compose, engineer, um, very obsessed with audio and sound. And um, as a visual artist, I am also, you know, I work with audio as well. I'm, I think I'm more interested in just how we experience uh, everything, <laughs> you know, sonically as well as audio and, and visual. Um, the work that I have up here are two pieces that I worked on recently. But even before we go into that, I just wanted to let you know that Marla Ma Morrison is a moderator, and she's in she's in the uh, she's in the chat. So you can ask her anything you want to know about the products. So this is one of the new mediums that uh, Liquitex uh, sent to me recently, and I've been loving this one. I mean, I've been using a lot of this one. I just have a few of them. I haven't gone through all of them yet, but I love this one too. The palette go. So um, Marla can answer any sort of questions that you may have about the products. So getting into the work, these are two pieces that I completed recently. I was in Jamaica visiting family and um, this piece, uh, I was super, I've always been interested in, in using uh, these tones, these sort of earth tones and, and, and substance from nature. So this is sand and medium and paint from a beach that I used to go to as a child in Jamaica. Um, and this is mixed in with um, um, paint, but it's also bauxite. Um, Let's see what, 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 what will come of it. But this is just me exploring and playing around with ideas. Um, my work is definitely very graphic. I do a lot of sketching in uh, on Illustrator and then translate that. Uh, this piece is um, what I will try my best to focus a little bit more on. And this is my, my hip. So these pieces started. Um, from an MRI of my hip. I'll get into that <laughs> also. Um, feel free to ask any questions. I would love to see 
some questions and whatnot pop up. So I feel like I'm not completely alone in talking to myself. Usually I'm listening to music when I'm painting. I'm curious about how you guys paint. Drop it in the comment. Let, it, let me know how you guys, what do you listen to when you're painting? Do you listen to audiobooks? I love audiobooks, podcasts. And if you have any good recommendations, please share. So um, I wanted to talk about, this is a creative community and what I got the sense from and I went through and I saw some of your work, you guys are super talented and I'm so excited to be a part of, of this in general and to, to hopefully meet some of you virtually and, and just see how you progress and, and you work. Um, the thing is, if, if you call yourself an artist, and it's such a difficult thing to come to, is to say, I'm an artist. I remember how odd it felt. And I think most artists feel that way. Um, lots of people, but lots of artists feel uh, they're, they're an artist if they are, if they've had a degree, if they've studied art, or if they call themselves an artist, or if they've been studying for however many years. But I think... It's safe to say you are an artist if you're compelled to create, if you can't help but to create, if you can't function without creating. So, and I think that's beautiful. I think that's magical. Um, it's a true, the true definition of a magician, I think. I think we're pretty, pretty amazing people who bring ideas and thoughts from like these, these intangible things and make them tangible and make them a thing that can be experienced, something that was in someone's mind, an idea, uh, an experience, and then it became like a reality. Um, and I think, you know, the magic of being an artist is our ability to transmute things. So we transmute what ails us right, into something that heals us or um, our experiences, things we've seen, things we've um, heard, things we've gone through, things we've, uh, we're experiencing now um, and, and we're learning constantly. We change that. Some of us use that, but I want to always remind, um, I remind my students and I, I always want to remind every artist that I come across, don't focus so much, especially when you're just starting out on the end product. It's the process that's the magic. The magic is what happens when no one else is around, when you're by yourself in your studio. Um, this is my magic and this is me transmuting what ailed me. Um, for some reason I was having these crazy hip pains and I went to the doctor and I got several MRIs and X-rays and they couldn't figure out what. Anyways, um, I decided that I was going to create a drawing of my hip and I was going to take that awful pain and, and what I was going through and make it, you know, obnoxiously bright and colorful, <laughs> as you can see. And I wanted it to, to be healing for me. When I look at colors and what happens with, with colors to me, it's, you know, it, it, it lightens us up. Um, let me show you a couple of things. Let me move this out of the way. Hey, Makia, it's Ashley. Yay. Hey, we're Hi, so Ashley. happy to have you on. I think we lost your phone view. Do you think you could tap us back into that? Oh, there we go. Are you there? There we go. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So this that I have here is a study, uh, basically my process. So before I... I have an idea and I might sketch it out on um, my iPhone or Illustrator or something. And then I wanna think about how I'm going to make this come true. How am I gonna make it happen? Um, so I decided that I was going to play around with the different colors and, and just to see um, you know, what would be possible. If you look here, if you look at this part, you notice how the yellow, and the green, I mean, the yellow and the blue mix and it creates a screen, but I didn't want that. I wanted it to be pretty solid, pretty solid yellow for it to look like that. Um, so I just tried these different versions and I tried all of these and again, make notes so I can remember, create like a really quick sketch and then voila, something happened. Um, I really like how this, these moments where you see the yellow 
and this pink sort of turned orange. It's really, really nice. But I didn't want that. And I wanted to make sure that um, that wasn't going to happen with the finished product. I'm still, and I feel like I'm always working through how to make certain things happen, but it, that's okay. It's a part of, part of being an artist and I absolutely love the process. So this is fun. This is my study. This is me just sort of sketching an idea and then executing it. Um, this is a process. Well, this is another version of the hip as well. I first create, started working on these hips uh, during my Liquitex residency. Um, it was a really nice opportunity for me to just play around with things. And the great thing about the residency is that Liquitex just gave me this space and gave me all these materials to just see what happens. And that's exactly what I did. So these aren't finished, but I'm just kind of showing you what's going on. Um, I'm going to try to do two things with you. I'm sure you all have your sketchbooks. Well, I like to sometimes, you know, create like a quick sketch of a, a drawing or a painting or a piece of work that I'm going to use before in my sketchbook. I'm going to show you this one. This is a finished piece it's like this you're you're probably seeing more blue on your screen but there's this green color that is just not showing up so this was the piece that I wanted to do and this is just me thinking through and me trying to find that color so I like to to make notes to see how I'm getting there so I know what colors to mix to get there. Um, this is one of them. And this as well. This is the next one. This one. I really like how it came out. The, it's just, paper on um, acrylic gouache. I'm using a lot of the acrylic gouache here um, on paper and I'm using a lot of their the Liquitex clear gesso. I use this as a base and then I apply the colors and so forth. So just wanted to show you, you know, again, a little study. Every artist does it different. I just mix it. I'm, I'm super obsessed with colors now. So um, if you look at my work, I go from being ultra realistic in my paintings to not at all realistic, to very graphic. So this is a sketch that I made on my iPhone in Illustrator. And we're going to, this is one of the demos that we'll be doing today. Um, being that these won't dry in time, I have a few so we can sort of work through them. I might not be finished with everything, but um, we'll try. So this is the idea that I want, right? I want these two tones, blue, it's a little bit lighter, and I'm obsessed with nails, even though I don't wear them. I just always think they're super cool and then I paint them a lot. Um, so I did a quick sketch beforehand and applied in here some clear gesso. I absolutely love this stuff. After I create, I created the sketch. Um, and then if we're able to get to it, this is um, an outline, a little drawing for this guy. If I, if we can get to it, we'll see. If there are any questions, please fire away. Talk to me so I don't feel like I'm 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 talking to myself, literally. I well, I usually do. Most people talk to themselves. All right. Fire away. Any questions for me, Ashley? 
you're interested in following um, my Instagram, it's here, Mickey and Machine, um, uh, Liquid Tax Official, Marla Morrison Art. Marla is the mediator that's assisting today. Again, Marla knows a lot about this material. So please reach out to her. She knows way more than I do. All righty. So the, this, this will not at all look exactly like the, the drawing. I don't want it to. I think what happens, especially when I'm working this graphic, is I, I, really, I really kind of want the process to happen and I don't want to force it too much. Um, sometimes I strive for that, but it's not necessary. Um, if you are painting or drawing or doing something, I hope you're doing, you can paint along with me or paint something or, 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 and share it maybe. Oh, you know what? Share it on your Instagram so I can see it. I would love to see any sort of work you guys are doing. I would honestly love, love to see your work. So I'm just gonna play around with some, uh, some color. Actually, you know what? I wanted to make sure that we didn't run out of time. So this is already mixed up. This is just burnt umber. And this is, let me show you what they look like. And burnt sienna mixed together. and burnt, so not raw umber. Let me find the burnt one. Yeah, here we go. Burnt umber. Mixed together, I just love how this color look against like really, really bright, these fluorescent colors that I'm obsessed with. Um, it, the process is, it. sometimes it feels easier than 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 other times because you know, it's a, it's all about layering, and I want I want it to look as as close to um, being created by you know a printer as possible. That's my my plan. Um, so I'm just gonna mix up a little bit of. Let me show you this actually. Mix up and show it to you. Remember. I before I learned about the other mediums in general, like uh, mediums at all to mix in, I really loved using the um, Lucutex clear gesso to add body to my paint to stretch it a little bit. And if you are you know, art material is expensive. It's expensive for everyone. And if you are a, what are the benefits of using clear gesso? Who questions? Yay, thank you. Um, if you are uh, trying to make art on a shoestring budget or, or in general, it, it's expensive. So it adds up. What I love is that you can stretch these materials. You can stretch them with if you use a little bit of the medium and you add some color, the cool thing about the um, Liquitex wash, and I spent a lot of time working with it, and then Liquitex, uh, uh, the professional paint um, is that it's high, there's a lot of pigment in it, it's a lot of color, so you can really go far with it. So say, I want her skin to have a little bit of a shine, because mostly my stuff's flat. So I would use clear gesso. So clear gesso is um, it, what it does for me. It gives, it leaves the the um, the surface color. If you do not want, say, um, to change the color, the background color, you can use clear gesso. So this is actually uh, clear gesso has been applied here. So it's been gessoed. It comes out a little. Let me show you that actually. Me show you what it looks like. It comes out a little milky looking, but it dries completely clear. And another question Marla can can answer for you. See how it looks? I just I just love it. I just love that. But the cool thing is that you mix, I mix it in with my paint. I stretch it. 
Um, the gesso has this sort of grit to it, that sound you're hearing. Um, it's marble dust. How cool is that? Marble dust in there. So it's a teeth that helps to hold on um, to the paint. So what I do is a little bit. I sand it down just to kind of make it a little bit smoother. And before I use it, and I usually sand um, more so the the works that that's on uh, canvas um, than uh, the paper. So is another question. What are the benefits of using gesso? I, they're all intermixable. The thing is, I'm I'm using only acrylic paints, right? The cool thing is, you can mix in anything, any of the uh, mediums with any of the colors, and it works. It works. So that's what it would look like. This is the burnt umber. I hope I answered your question, but the, that's a great thing for me about the, the mediums is that you can really stretch it and you can have fun with it and you can experiment with it. And, it, and it's still, and it's still archivable. It's still a uh, professional um, material. It's still um, going to hold. It's, it's, it's pretty solid. Um, and I love that I can do that. I've been using a lot of uh, acrylic as of recent, not as much. Um, of other um, other paints, so that looks like that. And I want to add in some more of this with the satin. So this one's actually mixed with clear gesso. So I want to add a little bit more of the satin flavor to it. The satin, the reason why I'm using the satin is like it gives a little bit more. It's not sh a shine. It's not as shiny as say um, the gloss medium it's just a touch i do want the work still to be flat but for the skin i'm going to use this the satin i really like it i've been using it a, a lot i'll add some more okay So um, what do you guys listen to when you're painting or drawing or creating? Do you just paint without music or noise? I would love to know. I love listening to music and uh, podcasts and audiobooks. And so if you, you have any recommendations, please share it. I'd love some. Um, not just because Liquitex is sponsoring <laughs> me and my using, I use all sorts of, I'll be using lots of different materials uh, today, but this is a really nice flat brush, right? If you notice, let me show you something actually. Well, this is not the same size, but this would be a bright, a bright brush. I, you know, I, Marla, maybe Marla can answer the question of why the, why the name is um, flat, versus bright, but you see, it's just a little bit longer. The bristles are a little bit longer. Um, and I listen to various music depending on. So what are you listening to now? I need details. I wanna add music to my playlist. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and I'm going to paint um, the body, the skin, right? So the hands as well. He listens classical. Oh yes. What who is your favorite contemporary classical composer? Mine. Later. I absolutely love this guy's music. Um, this will be a little bit lighter than the arm. So the neck area will be a little bit lighter. So let's. Can you guys see it pretty well? It's interesting to be talking while I'm painting. This is so interesting. It's sort of like how um, 
when I'm at the gym and my the instructors are just working out so hard and talking too. It's just like, geez, how, how are you doing this? Okay, let's see a question. Looks great. Yay. So this process is like apply paint, let it dry. Apply paint, let it dry. Uh, apply, let it dry. Um, and do a lot of dry brushing to get it nice and smooth because I wanted to, I don't want to see the brush strokes. Oops, that's okay. Her neck will just look a little fatter at the bottom. Apply, let it dry. It'll take several layers to sort of do that. Then grab one of my other brushes. This is also a bright, just gonna little dry brush it. That's layer one. And yeah, yeah. Ooh, I'm getting some. All right, keep it coming. I'm telling you, I love. Anyone has? What do you listen to music on Spotify? I listen to music on Spotify, so you can send me your playlist. Check them out. Ooh, who's that? All right, I'll check that person out too. We'll be able to save it in the chat. So because I'm going to make the arms a little darker, um, I don't necessarily want to put black, right? I might add a little, just a tiny bit of ultramarine blue. Let's see if I have it. Yeah, just a tiny bit. Why? I don't want it to, I kind of want, I mean, if you really look at uh, skin tones, right, there's like, I don't know. I mean, I know the images are so flat anyway. Just kind of want to give it a little bit of a light, little life. Just not too much because, again, I don't want to. I don't want it to turn green. A little bit more. Oh, I work from imagination a lot. I love working. I do work from photos. I do sometimes. And especially, you know, during uh, the pandemic, it was like hard to meet people and have people, you know, let you photograph. Actually, I'm going to use more uh, blue now. Um, but I work a lot from imagination because, uh, I don't know, it just just feels like it's more it's more me and it's more sort of me trying to uh me trying to express like what I feel this person because they're they're not real anyway it's sort of representative of everybody so yeah I just I do I work a lot from imagination I love um fantasy and I love um just stories in general uh Yeah, okay. It's just a little darker and that's all I need. So I tried to dry off the water before I put it back. I'm just gonna take some from here. Um, do you use, question for everybody, do you use water in your acrylic paint? You notice I haven't used any yet. And do you know why? Probably shouldn't. Yes, I do. So I have um, this, I, I like I like superheroes and like black female superheroes. And, and um, I, I do, I create these little characters and then like develop a, a little story around them and I will like return to them and keep painting them and, and so forth. I, I, I have a few of those, I have several of those. Um, 
I wish I could show you the rest of the art in my space, but I do have some on the walls in like an, another, it's a little farther, far away. Yeah, I love, I love fantasy and I love like creating just, you know, especially like history. I'm, I'm a, I love history. Um, I was a history major for a while and I changed to political science and then I changed to visual art. Um, I pretty much qualified for a, for dual degrees for, for, for political science and visual arts, but I love historical fiction. So a little twist on history. So what happens when you get into spaces that you can't quite go with your brush? You switch it. This is the size two for liquid touch. I'm gonna switch the brush. Tell you a little bit about the other brush that I'm gonna use in a second, because I can't really talk and paint at the same time. I'm just like, I'm doing these lines and I'm like, oh, ah, I'm nervous. Okay, little space. The cool thing about the, um, I hope the background color that I will be using, the blue that I already mixed, it's like covers very, very well. So those little spots also go away and I'm gonna go over it with a pretty significant black line. Uh, so, it's not necessarily like important again with 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 being flat. The the thing is, a lot of these um, super flat um, it was like drawings and paintings I make. It's like I do sometimes want them to feel a little bit real. I want it real, like sort of real emotion. But anyway, so I made um, the arms a little darker. If you know why, please put it in the chat. Why do you think I would make the arms a little darker than the neck? Again, this is just the first, get it down, get covered. I really liked how this looked um, when I drew it. I hope it comes out pretty good too. But again, you know, who knows? My um, first drawing teacher, um, she would al always say, work for discoveries, not results. Work for discoveries, not results. I thought that was interesting. I sort of kept that with me. And I haven't, and I have a thing for like, you know, doing the same image over and over and over. So there are these little, nuances these little changes that happens because it's not just it's not a print you know add some more up here for all of that i'm gonna go in again with this brush Ooh. it's okay Mm-hmm, because they're closer. Yeah. The hands are closer. 
So just a little little trick. If you look at a lot of like, um, I love Japanese landscape art. Oh my goodness. Um, but if you look at a lot of like, you know, paintings of like landscapes, if you look at how the mountains are rendered, notice sometimes it's like the darker color feels like it's closer, right? It pushes forward. It's not looking, I can't really see from here. There we go. So two layers, it's pretty good. Go with a different brush this time. I'm just gonna make it a little smoother. I'm go ahead and make another layer of this. Might be too early, but I'm really trying to finish it. Oh, another question. Um, Oh, you, who, let me see if anyone answered the question about mixing water into their acrylic paint. How do you, how do you extend your paint? Do you use mix, do you mix water into it? Um, and also, do you paint? I, I actually paint on the wall. I love just cutting out the canvas and painting on the wall. Um, so this is a really interesting position I'm in right now, painting. From this, from this angle. How do you paint? Do you paint? Do you use an easel? Do you use just a table? How do you guys do it? And I think I just started to do just paint on the wall because I, you know, painting in my living room. It's like I just didn't have the space to store all the canvases. And I love working super massive. Um, so it just made sense. So just paint. Then I'd uh, stretch. I stretch the paintings after. Just makes better sense of space. When I was uh, working for my living room. Okay, so I mix in a little bit of both of these. At the back of the the arm. Now this is gonna be a little tricky because. When I go in with that super bold black, you'll see it. But right now it just might sort of mix in. Hmm. Yeah, it goes all the way up. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit lighter so I can kind of see. So how do I fix that? I'm gonna probably put some white. And let it dry a little bit. Oh yeah, and, and a part of my process is like, uh, I am a slow painter. I am so slow because, you know, I am meticulous. So it's like all of these, there's, there'll be no sort of, Paint, like the, the white showing, like everything will be all detailed out. I mean, all blended and everything. So I'm slow. I spent, I spent a lot of time on a piece. So it's super interesting doing this live demo. Not at all expecting to finish it, but I'm gonna challenge myself. No, because that's not dry yet. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, 
Well, a couple of things, right? I mean, I, I first learned to paint with oil and I knew nothing. I did not know what I was doing. I was just like, I was painting in my apartment. This was before I ever taken an art class. Um, painting in my apartment, windows. Cl- I did not know that you're not supposed to wash oil off the sink. But I did. I did. Much better now. But um, just living, like living here, living where I'm painting, it's like just better to use, like, you know least toxins as possible and you know my daughters are here and I just want to make sure they're safe so I try to like leave you know the oil um but I'm moving into a new studio so I'll be able to to jump on some more oil so all right so the cool thing is I've already mixed up this color I love this blue this is rough for now I'm just gonna go in and just lay this down but at the end Try to visualize how this becomes a lot smoother, right? Just takes a little, little bit of work. So for this one, I mix a little bit of the Brilliant Purple with some cobalt, cobalt blue and, and white and titanium white. Very small amount of that, all right? And I just keep mixing and mixing uh, until I find the right, like I feel good about it. So I always use these colors and I have an obsession with the combination of um, pink and blue. For me, it's, uh, it's a personal reason why I use, and I always have these strings on and it's sort of my reminder to stay grounded. And with all I've gone through and experienced Sometimes life gets a little overwhelming. So just my reminder, I always have these two colors. So I'm gonna go around the sides with this blue. Is anyone painting along with me? Like not obviously what I'm painting or what I'm painting, but is if anyone's painting along with me, I definitely want to see your work at the end. Love that I can just go like that. So this is not even like, I just love the cover. I'm not, I just realized I'm, I, you know, not using a lot of, um, I'm using a little bit of a different mixture. Let me grab something else. So I make these like big tubs of it. <laughs> and then I go in, go in, try this one, see how it feels. Yeah, you see the difference? So uh, what happens if with these colors, like the, the especially the acrylic gouache, oh my goodness. It, it, it the cover is so so powerful it's so good um if you look at any sort of these products how they kind of let you, how they let you know and again marla can answer all these questions Do you... yeah i'll tell you again um so this is like it covers is that the correct term marla please help me out here i'm dying i don't know how to use the the, your lingo, your, um, the chemists know more about like why this is, but there's a lot more coverage with these um, acrylic gouache. And I love, love, loved it during the residency. I was just like going ham and I still have a lot of materials. So this is just not as much paint, right? It's more paint in this mixture. This, and it's the same color, I just had less paint in this one. You can see the color. So these colors for me, can you? Oh, no, I'm not using that one, I forgot.
Yeah, I, you can use gouache and acrylic together. You can. So what's going to happen is the gouache is more matte and the acrylic might have a little bit more shine to it. So it, it won't be as matte anymore, but you can mix them. And then that's, that's what's so cool about the products. I can use them. I can just mix whatever. I don't have to really worry about it. I love that. I want to think. I just want to paint, you know? Cover. So for this one, I'm probably going to use it for the shirt. Yeah, I'm just leave it alone for now. Let it dry. Uh, maybe just a little touch here. Yeah, you can. Um, but again, keep in mind what's going to happen to it, right? So if you want your gouache to be matte, you can use a matte. Um, it's pretty good. The matte, um, the, the matte varnish. I have some matte varnish here. You can, but just remember that it's going to change it a little bit. Okay. You can absolutely. Okay. So I usually work on several paintings at the same time. I love to have a bunch of different things up. Um, so I would, if I had to wait to let this dry, I'd probably grab the other painting and just like start working on it as opposed to waiting. Um, so I'm gonna, while I'm letting this somewhat dry, even before I add more colors to the arms, um, I'm gonna mix the color for the shirt. And remember that little bit that I had and it wasn't, didn't have, it wasn't very pigment rich. So add some titanium white to it. Now the titanium white is super strong also because I'm gonna use the gouache version. Oh, I have to open it. This, oh, or actually just, just go ahead and add and then mix it in. So the colors that I use, I don't know. I oof, I just I just always like it's it I just like how these the pink and the blue go together. Um, but for me, like I said, I wear these bracelets as my reminder to just keep going, reminder of where I'm coming from. Um, my story is not, you know, I wasn't making art all my life. I've always been a creative but it's more um, later in my life that I started. So if you feel that you're starting late, I think you're right on time. And I just love, I just love this. I love looking at art. I love making it, but I, I, I love experiencing it. I love seeing people's work. So my favorite, favorite things to do, just to look at art. And there are lots of shows if you're in, well, I'm in New York. There are lots, I'm not sure what it's like for you and wherever you are, but like in around fall, there are a lot of um, art shows and galleries open up uh, with uh, new shows. So there'll, there'll be a lot of things to see. Um, so I think it's too, I think it's still too dark. What do you guys think? Let's see how it looks on camera. Yeah, let's add some more titanium white to it. Some more. Cobalt blue is a very powerful color. Mm -hmm. yeah, 
it's a little bit better. Every time I stand up and then I sit down, I realize. Painting like this. It's interesting. I haven't done this. Maybe I'll do it more. It's not too bad. I don't usually have my feet. I'm very fidgety. I walk around a lot. I'll bring in the other brush for that. Look at that coverage. Look at that, you guys. Look at that one. Wow. Okay. Whoa. Mm -hmm. I think the pearls are sort of a blue as well. Sure. Look at how it's covering that brown. It's pretty dope, right? I do want to create a somewhat of a, oh! I'll go back over anyway. I'm gonna create some one of the indication of the bust here. So okay, I can get a lot of coverage. Like, look, still this brush has a lot of paint on it. I really love this stuff. The funny thing is like when I made the first bracelet I made, I was, you know, in thesis and I actually used uh, the Liquitex paints then they, when they had the little chubby bottle, the little tiny little chubby ones. Um, I was using that and I liked it since, but I was more so using the acrylic uh, paint. But my goodness, the gouache is on. I love the gouache. Do you guys like to paint figures or you like, or are you more of an abstract artist? Tell me about what you guys paint when you do paint. There seem to be, like, I think for me, for sure, you know, I started painting uh, figures and like, I wanted to paint like these ultra realistic looking people. Uh, and the reason I paint more graphic these days is I actually lost the ability to see in one of my eyes. Um, it's about almost a year, uh, last September. Um, I got a virus that, and I mean, still to this day, my vision hasn't completely returned. And so instead of painting, so this is, this is again, going back to the magic of using your experiences, you know, like, so I'm stuck at home with this super contagious um, uh, virus um, and I can't go out. And also like my eye looks like, like death and I, I want to paint. Right. And I was forced to sort of think about the figure in a different way. And I've always been interested in painting more of who we are, like more, 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 less about what we look like. Um, because, you know, we can take a photo. Let me try this other brush. Yeah, these brushes are my babies. These are super expensive. Um, this one actually. 
no, no, that, that's not it. This one, I can't find the name of it, but it's like some sort of. Yeah. It's some sort of animal's tail. I'm sorry. I'm so, I feel bad about it. Yeah. This one. Yeah, it's all rubbed off, so it's not there. But it holds paint really well. This one is a synthetic version. It's pretty good too. I paint abstract. Nice. I'm uh oh nice. I will show me. I wanna say. Um yeah, whatever comes out, you know what I mean? Just like put it out there. Just paint, just try. And I swear, like eventually it'll make sense. So again, you know, my story is like I am a painter and I can't see. How does that work? <laughs> and I knew that it was just like, you know what, this is an opportunity. Like I've come too far for this to be the reason that, you know, I'm gonna give up. And I just started painting differently. Um, I started painting these like large figures and they're not real, they're not a person. They're sort of like, for me, it's the emotion. And then th there's like the whole one eye thing happening. And, and then it led to these other portraits, these sort of, you know, I'm using these vibrant colors because it's like, a, how do I, how do I, just in case, like I'm never able to, like my eyesight never returns. Like I want to be able to just see colors. And I just became so obsessed with colors and just using it to express the figure as opposed to just focusing so much on the details, you know? And then I, I paint, started painting differently. Um, my work is certainly more abstract now and more graphic now. Um, I started sketching on my iPhone because I couldn't see very well. So, you know, the backlight from the phone was, was so perfect for me. And then I just, made these big giant monsters i'll show you something a little bit later one of them is standing is like is right next to me um and then it led to me getting this this uh, residency with liquitex so the thing is like if we use what ails us you know what i mean how could you go wrong how could you go wrong Use the things that you're going through, you're experiencing. So no one can tell those stories better than you. A little bit more titanium white. We have a few more minutes to go. And I have the rough draft. You know what I'll do when I finish it? I'm going to post it on my Instagram. Again, if you want to find me and send me those pics or tag me in them or something. I want to see what you work on and keep creating, just keep painting. Keep doing what you do. Keep being creative. We need more creatives. Experiment, try, mess up. It's interesting how all the work that I was making when I first started out, like how they are so important to the work that I make now. I, you know, you don't see the connection then you see it afterwards. So I have like a minute left, you guys. You think I can get this hot pink in? What do you guys think? I'm gonna try to put some on the nail, see how it looks. I think I might need to like clean up some of these nails. Actually, I'll try these first. So here we go. So this is the fluorescent. I'm gonna mix a little bit. You know what? I probably should do a little gloss. Hmm. Now I'll just do the satin still, just a little shine. Mix it. And I'm just gonna use a brush. Look at that. You can really stretch your material. So the, the fluorescents aren't as, like it doesn't cover as much. So sometimes I would do layers of a lighter or dark color. And then go back over. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go over this several times, at least three or four more times of layers. Paint the same thing again for it to 
be close, be finished. But I promise you, I will post it. And you notice how it bleeds over the, the brown, it bleeds underneath it. I'm gonna have to go over this one. I think, oh, actually, I might not. <laughs> Look at the nails, you guys. How weird it looks, because, you know, why not? I li like, as I said, like, I hardly get my nails done, but I just think it's just so cool. I want to get my nails done like these. I love getting super bright colors, too, when I get my nails done. But like, I'm such a nail biter. It's just like, not good. I'm trying to finish to the best of my ability. But as I said, I'm going to have to go over. But I think it's so fun, this little nail, crooked nail action going on. Oh, we forgot to paint this, so the nail that's here. It's gonna be two, two nails. Mm -hmm. Let me add the details later. <laughs> okay, thank you everybody for tuning in. I'm gonna finish this and post it. This is so fun. It's so weird to talk and paint. It's my talk to myself, really. Let's see, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I want, before you go, I want to share a couple mantras with you and that I have used and it got me through hard, hard times. And I, I always say, and this thing came to me one day, it's just so out of the blue, it won't make sense at first. It won't make sense at first. It won't make sense at first. Like anything you're doing right now, especially as creatives, it won't make sense at first. It'll be so confusing and so weird and you'll beat yourself, you forever. Sometimes you'll beat yourself up, but it will not make sense at first. And then I always say, well, this is not mine, but don't let your demons live rent free. <laughs> How cool is that? No, they shouldn't. You should use it. So again, using the things that you go through to influence your art. And the other one, um, actually I have it on my phone. I don't remember it out of my head. Actually, oh, it's right here. I forgot I printed it. Um, Hello. Hello. So I'm so going to turn this off. Wow. Let's just mute this for a second. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Oh, great. Okay. So I think you changed the um. So my the mantras, right? Do I still have time? Yes or no? So, yes. Okay, great. The mantras that I um, have been using. Um, use everything as inspiration. Use everything as inspiration. Use everything as inspiration. So this is my monsters that I started making instead of a realistic painting. I'm making these weird things. I made about eight of them. Use everything as inspiration. And one thing that I always say, especially when like, I feel like I'm not good enough or I can't 
create or it's just not coming to me. It's like, what can I do now to keep moving forward? What can I do now to keep moving forward? What can I do now? You'll be surprised. Um, walk away, change, move, come back later. It is so hard sometimes to, uh, to be creating and wanting to finish. A lot of times we feel like we need to complete the work. It is so important to walk away. Remember that you are a magician, you're an artist. You get to, to do this very um, important job of creating realities and to also like to bring things in from non-existent to existent and also to inspire others. So by you sharing your art and talking about your process, um, you just never know who you'll inspire. And I, and I still to sometimes just, I can't believe I'm actually really here doing this, but I love it. And I get to meet other amazing creative people and, and get to see art and just to see other people's worlds and their experience and how they're using everything that they've uh, gone through as inspiration. Thank you.